Hello everyone, this is Rig and today we are going to discuss about Indus Valley Civilization, People and Society. Now this is going to be a bit of different and unique presentation because unlike other general topics like town planning, urbanization, water management, religion, here we are going to dive deep into the internal lives of people and we are going to see what kind of dresses they used to wear, what kind of source of entertainment was there, what kind of societal structure was there, how people used to view each other. All these will concern our presentation today. So without doing any delay, let's get into this. The Harappan people appearance and attire. What kind of attire did the Harappan people have? What kind of dresses they used to wear? The Harappan figures display both male and female characteristics. Some have identifiable gender attributes. So the dresses here was not just a plain covering and it was according to different gender, it, the dresses were also different. Uh, probably because people had a, a very detailed sense of fashion in them. Male figurines are often depicted bareheaded or turbaned, while female figurines are adorned with jewelry like necklaces, chokers, hair ornaments and bangles. So male figurines did not have a lot of ornamentation in them, uh, while female figurines had ornaments and decorations like necklaces, chokers, hair ornaments and bangles. Clothing styles suggested by the stone cultures include dhoti-like garments for men and woven cotton or wool dresses for women. So male had dhoti-like garments uh, which is a single piece of cloth stretching up to several meters and uh, women had joint woven cloth uh, probably made up of wool. Uh, wool for women and this is very unique because we don't find any archaeological evidence of pieces of cloth but we will have to interpret the dresses from the stone sculptures or terracotta figurines that uh, we find in the archaeological record of Harappan culture. Hairstyles varied among women from buns, braids to fan shaped headdresses probably made of bamboo indicating societal status or occupation. Now in today's society also the hairstyles and headdresses or decorations in the head say a lot about the societal status of a person. Like uh, in the kingdoms in monarchical period, uh, the kings had a crown above their head. Similarly, here women had fan shaped hairdresses sometimes which were made out of bamboo and these women were probably in an elevated social status than the other common women around. Both men and women wore belts indicating a possible common accessory in Harappan attire. So belts were common for every gender and both men and women wore something like belt or vest bands. Here on the left hand side the priest king sculpture from the priest king uh, sculptures two interpretations of male dresses have been made and from uh, the mother goddess terracotta figurine uh, three interpretations of how women used to dress have been made using modern concepts and designs. Harappan leisure and fun. What kind of, uh, what was the leisure activity or entertainment activity of the Harappan people? Terracotta stone and bronze sculptures provide insight into Harappan recreation. So much has not survived but still from the terracotta stone and bronze sculptures we can understand that there was some form of recreation in the Indus Valley people. Figurines depict various activities like dancing, playing musical instruments and engaging in games. So there are terracotta figurines of people dancing playing musical instruments, mainly string instruments and engaging in different type of games. On the left hand side you can see a board game which has been found from the Harappan culture. Toys such as spinning tops, miniature cooking vessels and toy furniture 
point to a culture that valued play and domestic life so just like we have dolls and other kind of toys today uh, similarly in indus valley also there were miniature cooking vessels spinning tops and toy furniture and also bullock carts toy bullock carts made out of terracotta was very much common in the harappan culture the discovery of dice and game resembling pithu a traditional indian game suggest organized leisure activities so we find existence of a game like pithu which is a very much traditional indian game and we uh, it has it was played it was a board game played with the help of a dice so this suggests that people used to sit together several people not only one but uh, a group of people used to sit together and practice some kind of games which suggest organized leisure activities Terracotta figurines of people and animals with humorous features reflect a culture with a sense of humor. So we find terracotta figurines where people are enjoying their life, where people are in humorous mood and uh, the figurines project a very happy kind of emotion of the people in Indus Valley culture. Hence we find that uh, the uh, people had a good sense of humor along with the different type of toy artifacts found we find that people valued play and domestic life in the indus valley culture next up we have harappan society and worship this has been discussed in detail in previous videos but still here is a summary worship of female deities indicates visualization of divinity in feminine form so the female figurines worship is very much common in in the across all the sites in indus valley and this projects that there was a visualization of divinity in female form and fertile worship or fertility cult was very much prevalent in the indus valley culture figurines of ordinary women were fewer suggesting a distinction between divine and mortal representation so we don't we almost find no existence of figurines of ordinary people all the uh, sculptures in indus valley civilization project to the divine aspect of the culture uh, in the form of sculptures like mother goddesses or the priest king so uh, and in the seals also we find uh, different impressions of animal motifs along with pashupati in yogic position so all this suggests that there was a very prominent distinction between the divine and mortal representations terracotta figures of women grinding or kneading dough and women with children highlight domestic and material aspect of uh, the society even though it is uh, uh, very few in number but still we find uh, people or women doing domestic activities like grinding or kneading dough uh, and all, all these things represent the fact that there was maternal aspect in the society and the female used to play the domestic role as we see in the indian subcontinent even today recent excavation suggests that harappan society and concepts of mother goddess worship has been potentially linked to fertility and prosperity so the fertility cult has been very much evidenced throughout all the sites in indus valley civilization with the excavations of mother goddess uh, sculptures that indicates that there was some kind of fertility ritual all around the civilization the presence of terracotta figurines across most segments suggest widespread religious practices or rituals so terracotta figurines were there in every site of indus valley civilization these were probably religious figures or they were offered as votive offerings to their faith to their religion hence we find that there was widespread religious practices or rituals throughout the indus valley culture now harappan health and diet how was the health of people in the harappan culture and what 
were the foods they used to consume. Early studies attempted to classify Harappans into racial types, but modern studies focus on biological heterogeneity. So there were assemblance of all kind of people in Harappan culture. Hence, one type of race cannot be identified from the uh, people in Harappan Valley uh, civilization. Therefore, uh, modern studies focus on biological heterogeneity. Harappans of different regions showed varied physical traits, traits but shared similarities with present day local populations. So, uh, there were varied physical uh, traits. It cannot be said that all the people looked similar or all the people had similar kind of skin complexion. But uh, it can be said that just like in India today, we have people of different physical uh, traits. Similarly, people of different physical uh, traits also used to exist among the Indus Valley people. Studies by Kennedy in 1997 revealed that there was an incidence of malaria among the Harappan. So mosquitoes were very much prevalent in the Harappan society and they caused the disease of malaria as they cause it even today. The Harappan diet likely included grains, fruits, dry products and fish as suggested by the archaeological finding. If you go through the video on agriculture of Indus Valley civilization, then you will get to know about this in detail. But here the summary, as a summary, I would like to explain that different kind of grains were consumed by the Indus Valley people along with fruits and dairy products which were procured from the animal husbandry and fish as suggested from the archaeological findings. Analysis on skeletal remains uh, provides insight into Harappan health including signs of strenuous physical activity and nutrition. So people were very much hard working and that can be uh, gained that evidence can be gained from analyzing the skeletal remains found in the burials of Indus Valley culture. Now, Harappan occupations and societal sculptures, uh, uh, structure. What was the occupation of the Harappan people? As we have discussed before that there were different modes of uh, subsistence that meant that there was a variety of occupation in the Harappan uh, people and what was their social culture. Harappan society was diverse with occupation ranging from farmers to sculptures and scribes. So there were different kinds of occupation. There were priests and nobles. There were officials, scribes and minor priests. Craftsmen were very much prominent in the Indus Valley society. And next uh, under all of them came the servants, laborers and patients. The societal, uh, social differentiation was very much evident though not as pronounced as contemporary civilizations like Egypt. So in Egypt we get different class divisions uh, in a very prominent manner but in Indus Valley civilization the societal differentiation was not that much prominent but Obviously, there was a social structure and different classes of people used to live together in, a, in the same society. Terracotta figurines and artifacts suggest a society with specialized professions including brick masons, sailors and merchants. So from the terracotta figurines and <coughs> from the infrastructures that we see in the Indus Valley civilization, we can understand the fact that there were specialized professions in the society and those specialized professions also included brick masons, sailors and merchants. Evidence of urban planning and infrastructure indicates a complex social organization. So social organization in the Indus Valley culture was not that much simple. From the evidence of urban planning, we get to understand that it was a very complex system of social organization. The social roles were likely tied to the city and rural settings with a significant 
proportion of the population engaged in agriculture so even though we find existence of urbanization as we have discussed before in our previous videos there was a significant amount of population living in the villages who used to practice agriculture only and the urban centers pro uh, probably served as a market for them hence uh, the social uh, social roles were likely tied to the city and rural settings both on the left hand side you can see a picture where in a pyramid structure uh, it has been depicted what kind of people used to occupy what classes in the indus valley culture this image is common to all the river civilizations of uh, the ancient world Hence, priests and nobles used to occupy the highest position. After that came officials of the priest and scribes and minor priests. So this was the second class of people. Craftsmen who were specialized in different form of activities and culture used to occupy the third level of the society and the last level were occupied by servants laborers and patients so this was common to all the river civilizations of the in uh, of the contemporary in this world harappan culture and speculations the absence of deciphered recent uh, written records limits the understanding of harappan social hierarchy and cultural practices so as we have discussed before we still have not been able to decipher the indus writing or the indus script and not being able to decipher the writing puts us on a disadvantage to understand the social hierarchy in indus valley civilization Archaeological evidence of toys and games suggest a society that valued children and recreation. So we find miniature cooking pots, miniature sculptures and terracotta figurines of different kind of uh, toys. All these things suggest that there was importance of children and those uh, sculptures also project the fact that recreation was very much valued by the people here. Speculations on caste and class differences remain and some scholars suggesting a stratified society. So even though we get an idea about the class difference of Indus Valley culture, but still speculation on class and differences remain. The presence of diverse terracotta figurines across all layers of society indicates a shared cultural heritage. So diverse terracotta figurines have been found in all layers of the society and that indicates that there was a shared cultural heritage among all the sites of Indus Valley civilization. The Harappan culture remains a subject of fascination and study with many aspects yet to be fully understood. So unlike the Egyptian, Mesopotamian and other contemporary civilization of the time, the Indus civilization has a lot of things which are yet to be studied because proper researches has not been done. Even proper excavation has not been completed in many of the important sites. Now Harappan political structure and leadership. What was the political structure? How the leaders used to be elected? Was it hereditary? Who were the leaders? What kind of lifestyle did the leaders have? All these things we will discuss. The nature of Harappan political system is very much debated, focusing on whether a state existed and its structure centralized or multiple states. So we have existence of Greek city-state where one city used to function as a state, even though there were communication be between different cities each city had its own government and there had a they all had a different kind of social structure so in harappa also it is debatable whether 
ईच सिटी और ईच अर्बन सेंटर हैड देयर ओन सेपरेट पॉलिटिकल स्ट्रक्चर और द पॉलिटिकल स्ट्रक्चर वॉज सेंट्रलाइज विद अ कैपिटल एंड विद अ कैपिटल विथ सेंट्रलाइज कंट्रोल सो दिस इज अ वेरी डिबेटेबल मैटर बिकॉज राइटिंग हैज नॉट बीन डिसिफर्ड एंड मेनी रिसर्चर्स आर येट टू बी डन ऑन दिस एस्पेक्ट एलिमेंट्स ऑफ वॉरफेयर conflict and force in harappan civilization seem less pronounced than the contemporary mesopotamia and egypt so in harappan civilization one of the unique aspect of indus valley culture is that we don't find existence of a lot num uh, lo lot of military records so weapons and other kind of defense and military related activities are not very much prominent showing the fact that these were peace loving people and did not focus on defense or weapons or warfare as much as it it was focused on co contemporary civilization of mesopotamia and egypt harappan artifacts suggest some level of conflict such as fortifications at sites like dholavida but the scale is uncertain so there was very minimum of defense structures we see in the harappan culture the uh, the greatest one of the greatest evidence of defense is that there was fortifications at sites like dholavira even though we don't find proper existence of army or military but we find existence of security features like fortifications in a few sites the civilization lasted for some 700 years with artifacts and traditions suggesting a stable but possibly decentralized society so everything every uh, aspect of indus valley culture uh, lasted for like 700 years and <coughs> all the evidences suggest that there was possibly a decentralized society means there was no central control because the area or the scale of indus valley civilization was very much big hence to control it from a center would have been very difficult and we find existence of different cultural traits in different urban societies in the indus valley culture uniformity in harappan artifacts across various cities indicates some level of political or cultural integration so there were some commonalities between all the urban centers but uh, but it cannot be said that there was a centralized structure in the indus valley civilization now debates on the existence of an harappan empire so whether there was a king and whether he or she had an empire this is a matter of debate some scholars like pigott in 1986 suggested a centralized harappan empire based on the uniformity in script and measurement so uh, pigott suggested that there is an empire with a central controller or governor in the form of monarchy and this uh, interpretation was based on the uniformity seen in the script and ways of harappan civilization walter a fair service contested the idea of pigott saying that the idea of harappan empire pointing to the absence of evidence of priest king slaves and court or court officials so there was absence of priest kings slaves or court officials we don't find much uh, existence we don't find existence of slaves and court officials projecting the fact that the there may not have been a central administration in the indus valley culture sheffer in 1982 argued that the harappan civilization was characterized by a well developed trade network rather than centralized government so sheffer said that there was a well developed trade network with common factors in economy and finances but there was no central government the uniform distribution of artifacts across all the sites in indus valley civilization suggests that there was equality of access to wealth among village and city dwellers 
challenging the notion of a centralized empire so there may not have been a centralized empire but there were some features of commonality that can be evidence from the uniform distribution of artifacts across all the sites Despite the absence of grand tombs or palaces, some form of state structure likely did exist in the Harappan civilization. So there was some governance, some organizational activities with ability to administer the whole region, but th there was an absence of grand tombs or palaces showing the fact that there was no centralized empire in the harappan culture now harappan social and economic indicators what were the social and economic indicators of the harappan valley civilization the harappan civilization exhibited site specialization labor mobilization for public works and a trading outpost system indicating economic complexity so from our video in trade and uh, commerce of indus valley civilization we have got the information that there was labor mobilization for public works and there was a trading outpost in northern afghanistan so uh, sarar nahar rai uh, which was a trading outpost uh, that helped the indus valley people to communicate with that of the market in central asia that indicates that there was economic complexity in harappan culture cultural homogeneity and a common system of writing suggests some degree of administrative control so there was some cultural commonality like weights and measurement and also the uniform system of writing this suggests that there was some degree of administrative control social differentiation is evident but not as pronounced as uh, in more mature states with the absence of huge royal tombs and palaces so even though we find existence of class differences in the harappan society but still it was not very much prominent because we find absence of huge royal tombs and palaces jacobson in 1986 suggested the fact that the harappan state had sovereigns linked to mythical character with a weak economic stratification so there were sovereigns which were linked to mythical characters means they used to believe in some kind of mythical power and they used to consider that character to be the sovereign of the entire state but there was a weak economic stratification this was the view of jacobson which he projected which is said in 1986 artifacts and structures indicate that the harappan society was very disciplined with a strong corporate element hinting at a complex yet decentralized government so there was a strong corporate element that can be witnessed from the internal and external trade infrastructure of the whole civilization but there was a decentralized governance among the whole area next up we have harappan elite and symbols of power how were the elite and what were their their indicators of power over 60 percent seals found in mohenjo-daro feature a unicorn motif potentially symbolizing the harappan ruling elite so we find existence of an unicorn motif and that was the symbol of harappan ruling elite so this is very much unique because the elite was identified according to the unicorn motif kenaya suggests the unicorn may represent the aristocracy or merchants with executive roles in governance so this was an indicator of aristocracy or highly com uh, highly influential merchants with executive roles in governance so the people who had at the capability of administration with high amount of aristocracy and luxury had the uniform a uh, unicorn motif according to kenoya frequent motifs such as bull elephant rhinoceros and tiger 
also hint at powerful symbols within the Harappan power structure. So there were probably different tribes or clans of people with uh, who adapted different symbols as their communal indicators. So we find other than unicorn, we find existence of bull, elephant and rhinoceros along with tiger. This hint at powerful symbols within Harappan social power structure. The absence of grand palaces or tombs at Harappan size, uh, sites raises question about the nature of political control. So we find absence of grand buildings or royal tombs or palaces where the uh, where a king like figure could reside this absence suggests that there was a very much common type of political and administrative control differences in urban planning and the presence of symbols of power across the cities indicate varied but organized governance system so there was organized governance system along with variety in urban planning and presence of symbol of power so it was a decentralized power structure with commonalities in the field of commerce and faith harappan civilization a re-evaluation of state and power here we will understand the recent trends in Harappan studies oscillate between the notions of a centralized empire and complete decentralization. So uh, the, uh, a few aspects of Harappan society suggest that there was a centralized empire and a few aspects of Harappan society also suggest that there was complete decentralization. Existence of a complex communication system, artifact, standardization in the form of weights and economic specialization point to some of some form of state organization so the commonalities between all the sites of indus valley civilization are communication system artifact standardization and economic specialization ratnagar shirin ratnagar in 1991 and others used cross cultural parallels to analyze the Harappan state against other early state societies. So they uh, did comparative analysis in order to understand the state and power structure of the Indus Valley civilization. Harappan sites like Rakhigari and Dholavira raise questions about the extent of political centralization. So we find existence of Harappan sites, recently excavated sites like Rakhigari and Harappa and uh, Dholavira. These sites, the excavation and the uh, artifactual evidences found in these sites raise questions about what kind of extent was that of the political centralization. Current scholarship is more open to the idea of decentralized political structure moving away from the presumption of a highly centralized state. So all the current scholarship and modern researchers indicate or project towards the fact that there was a decentralized political structure with commonalities in the field of trade and commerce and financial activities. So this is all we can uh, for now we can know about the Indus Valley power and state structure. Now concluding insights the Harappan people and society. Here we will go through an overview of whatever we have learned in this presentation and that comes with Harappan society was marked by sophisticated urban planning, there was diverse occupation and the social structure was very much complex. So it was not a single stratified society with people doing similar kind of activity and following the similar kind of rules everywhere. The civilization artifacts such as terracotta figures and seal suggest a rich cultural life with leisure activities and religious practices. So there was a very much rich cultural life with proper sources of entertainment and devotion towards faith. 
there is a debate among scholars regarding the Harappan political system ranging from a centralized state to a collection of city-state. So people have arguments in form of a centralized state and sometimes in form of a decentralized power structure. But modern researchers show that the political structure was more or less decentralized with some commonalities. Evidence of social equality is seen in the widespread distribution of artifacts challenging the notion of a highly stratified society. As we have discussed before, there was obviously class differences, but it was not very much highly stratified. Symbols of power was there such as unicorn motif on seals point to an organized governance system though not necessarily an empire so there was definitely an organized governance system and that may not have been necessarily in the form of an empire the lack of monumental architecture like palaces or tombs in Harappan sites implies a different kind of social organization compared to contemporary civilization. So in the contemporary civilizations like that of Mesopotamia and Egypt, we find existence of royal features which we don't get in Indus Valley civilization. So that was all about people and society of Indus Valley culture. This video was a bit different because we dived uh, deep into the internal lives and politics of the Indus Valley civilization. Hope you have liked it. Please go through the other videos in the sites uh, in the series in order to get a total idea about Indus Valley civilization. And as usual, Please support me so that I can bring brighter contents in future. Thank you so much.